Hello everyone, welcome back to Raise Aerospace and Microsoft Flight Sim 2020, where I'm going to try out the Flying Fries Scrapyard Monster. This is available for free on flightsim.to, and it is basically a hodgepodge of parts. I will describe it based on what they said on the website. It says a fictional aircraft which stands by its name, an improbable mix of random objects found in a scrapyard. Not really random though, because at the heart of this assembly lies a stunning Cosworth Aston Martin V12 engine. Uh, so yeah, that that's quite a lot. That's not something you'll randomly get at a scrapyard, but anyway, 1000 horsepower, 1060 horsepower in fact, 2,700 newton meters of torque. Uh, its empty weight is only 830 kilograms, and this never exceeds speed is 250 knots. It's got 4K to 8K PBR textures, and so the install size is over two gigabytes. So it's not, it's not trim. <laughs> Let's put it that way. And I, I sort of feel like with the I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll have to see. I, I want it to feel like like an old 50s car with a really huge engine on it, but it's really draggy and heavy. So therefore, it doesn't really accelerate as well. But from the descriptions I see, it seems like this thing takes off like a rocket. So we'll find out. Uh, we will weigh it down. It has ballast because the frame is so light. The empty mass is so light that they added nearly a ton of ballast to it. Uh, I decided to fly in Detroit. They are actually having some, uh, I guess, a celebration flights, a Scrapyard Monster release tour. And uh, they have multiple sessions for this. Unfortunately, I couldn't get in on it because of the timing. Uh, the first one was at 2000 UTC which was noon my well close to uh, I think 1 p.m. my time so no way but yeah I think for the next few days they'll have various events uh they're gonna be at the Himalayas tomorrow and then Papua New Guinea on the third and then Chile on the sixth and then Alaska slash Canada on the eighth all this information is on the flightsim.to site for the plane, which I will link in the video description. This aircraft was slowly crafted with love and attention to details between 2022 and 2023. Detroit Metro it. Tower Romeo Alpha 412 at runway Niner left ready for departure straight the out The sun is setting here. I mean, it's got pretty good instrumentation here. That's a custom-ish altimeter dial. There's a custom G-meter thing. That RPM dial's wacky. Um, hundreds, no kidding. That's a manful pressure dial I haven't seen before. Kick firmly in case of rumbling noise. Okay. And al alternators and then the voltage there. Fuel flow indicator there. So it's got a full-featured cockpit. I don't know what the snooze is for. Oh, this is the this is the coin slot thing. It's it's like uh, April Fool's Day joke plane from Got Friends. It's actually got the same sort of insert a coin coin slot and and then it's got a pad. It's like got everything, <laughs> just in case. Uh, propelled by monster, I guess. And then what's this big handle? That's the landing gear. Wow. Okay. Interesting. Let's take a look outside. Okay, well, we can see it fairly well. There's something that we should not expose to direct sunlight. There's a propeller. It certainly is boxy up front. And that wing... Don't know about aerodynamics. I mean, it's got frame, it's got... it's a... tail dragger. It's got monster on the tail. It's like something that was from Next Space Rebels or something, except with planes. Got exhausts like that. And the engine is center mounted. I'm, I'm not too sure. I guess it keeps its fuel in the wings. I'm not too sure where the ballast is either. It might be those things at the bottom there. Speaking of which, how do we release the ballast? 
I don't know what that does. Okay. Um, 32 horsepower right now. It tells you to torque and everything. Mm, you, you're the parking brake. Well, I don't know how to release the ballast. Um, oh, there's the ballast. Okay. Jettison ballast. I guess it's all or nothing on that. So you can't release some of the ballast like you might in uh, Glider or something like that. Alright, parking brake. Well, we can clearly see the power. I don't think we need more than 120 horsepower to take off. Oh, 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 it uh, went more than 120. I was... Come on, come on. No, no, I, I, it revved up after a bit. Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. And the torque is a lot. It's a lot of torque. Oh, fudge. Well, th that, that up ahead is sort of like a runway. It's, it's, uh, power is highly variable. Okay. No. Oh, uh, uh, once, once you apply more than a certain amount of power, it goes up really fast. I'm just trying to hit 120, but it won't hit 120. It wants to go straight to 200. Okay, we're off. Not on an approved runway here. And we're off at like 60-ish miles an hour, or 60-ish knots there. Well, now that we're in the air, we can deal with the torque a little bit better. I didn't see trim wheels, but they must be here around somewhere. I'm trying to trim. But yeah, my throttle setting is constant, but the horsepower is going up. It's got interesting lighting, too. Well, I haven't even pulled the gear up. Gear up. It's already sort of powerful. I'm only at 50% throttle, and... It's past 100. We'll probably use the fuel pretty quickly with it at full throttle, though. Yeah, it, it looks like even with a 1,160 horsepower, as long as we have that ballast, it's not going much faster than what we have right now. So... Well, uh, dump the ballast. I guess... Oh, yep, there it goes. It is animated. Boy, they... They take their time with this. Okay, let's not go up though. Let's see how fast we can get here. I guess it does have drag in terms of not being able to accelerate despite all the power. So there is that. It's just the the sort of lateral feel of it while it's turning doesn't feel like it's got that drag. But certainly the sort of straight line feel of it makes it seem like it's being held back dramatically. It said that the max altitude is 37,000 feet, but I, I, I'm not sure there's any form of pressurization on here. I hope I'm in some sort of suit, pressure suit or something. Yeah, even uh, holding it pretty level at this altitude, which is 8,400 feet, uh, it's not going past 200 knots, really. It's actually not as difficult to fly as I thought it would be, and maybe it ought to be. Very maneuverable, very well balanced. Press and hold one second. No less, no more. But I, I guess that's just the starter. I guess it doesn't add fuel like the God Friends one, it just starts the plane. Okay. 
I would like more experimental planes. That's something that X-Plane is always good with. Um, I don't know, I haven't gone through the process of making a plane for Flight Sim. I probably ought to. I had tried to make the Beechcraft Starship for uh, X-Plane. And at least I found that the process in general is fairly straightforward. Uh, I don't know if it's quite as straightforward for Flight Sim. At least on uh, initial blush, it seems to be more complicated. But yeah, it'd be interesting to get experimental planes in here, especially if they're high quality like this This one is. I, I don't know if you can call it an experimental plane. I guess so. You know, there's fictional and then there's experimental. Experimental connotes a certain amount of realism where you're trying it out and expecting a certain dynamics. I don't know, it, it's not impossible for this to fly the way it is, but it is getting an appropriate amount of drag. I, I would say that um, compared to what I thought when I was looking at the description, uh, it's not unreasonable in terms of its acceleration. I thought it was going to be very rockety without the uh, ballast, and it's not that bad. And the torque on the ground was pretty much what I expected, that's why I didn't even try to throttle up that much. And I was looking for about 120 horsepower only. Apparently they put a SpaceX sort of decal on the vertical stabilizer. Okay, let's go for a dive. Well, that's interesting. I only have it at 25% on the throttle, but it's showing a negative horsepower there. Now it's getting positive again. Possibly because of the dive. It went negative or something. The fact that it's not really gaining speed in a dive like this is probably right. <laughs> that's That seems reasonable. Uh, I don't think this is the flyover that baseball fans were expecting. But it's the one they got. So if I try and level out with uh, only the... N it's reading some variable number, uh, sometimes negative horsepower United as I pull up. Let's see, 175. I've got 175 horsepower. I suppose the variable variability in the power has to do with the engine, and they might have actually researched that. The engine is interestingly quirky. At least uh, from the way it's reacted to my throttle so far. Well, I suppose I should try and land it. But yeah, very stable. Not a huge problem to fly. Taking off, though, will be a challenge. The negative horsepower thing, though, I'm not too sure what to make of that. Landing gear down. There's the sound inside a cockpit. It's actually fairly mild. It is a tail dragger. I have trouble with tail draggers, but somehow I feel like this is not your normal tail dragger. But then again, it's got the torque, and so we'll see. But apparently it can cruise at 50 knots, so we know we can land at a fairly low speed. And I'm just keeping it to the throttle I have right now, which is under 100 horsepower at the moment. I'm probably causing a lot of pain for a lot of traffic here at Detroit Metro. About 100 horsepower. Coming in from pretty high here. Going to 119 or decimal, 25 air shuttle, 6362. Well, dumping even more power. Oh, it's going negative. Okay, we've touched down. 
I'm definitely not gonna put on the brakes. That's always bad with tail draggers. I'm just gonna throw down. I don't know what effect negative horsepower has as far as tail dragging is concerned. Eek. Can I do ground handling with this? I'm pulling up really hard to try and keep it on its tail. But, ooh. Well, I'm trying to go off here. Let's see, let's see if I can keep it on a taxi way. Right now, 29 horsepower. Okay, maybe at this level it's okay. We can steer it and keep it going. Basically in the blue area on the airspeed indicator there. You gotta try and take off in a way that isn't all over the place, let's see. That's a lot of planes around. Okay. Let's try and take off without doing any harm. Ooh. It's not even that much horsepower. Uh, okay, uh, no, I give up, I give up. Uh, yeah, takeoff is gonna take some extra practice. Let's get in daylight before I finish. There we go. We haven't been showing it in all of its glory. Well, here it is. I do not seem to have a pressure suit, so probably going up to 37,000 feet or trying to would not be a good idea. Look at the wear on the tires. They certainly meant it about the textures. They've put a lot of wear and tear on everything. But alright. There you have it. That is the Flying Fries Scrapyard Monster. And with that, I'll say thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.